another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Madi. And it's a join me in the G spot for today's episode of how to reinvent yourself. We have the amazing, the fabulous Nicole Kane. The crowd goes wild. <laughs> you guys should be very familiar with this woman, okay? She's a media mogul, started with Nicole Bitchy, then went to Exo Nicole, and now it is my happy flow. When I tell you that she is a serial entrepreneur, girl, you are killing it. Thank so, you. So, <laughs> so happy to have kind of like seen your progress along the way, right? Oh, man, like, yes. Because we, we go way back. Ago. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm so proud of you. Like you, Aww. you had the spicy life, but we knew each other. And I swear that was over 10 years ago. And just to see how it's blossomed and everything, like you, you continue to stay true to you. So. Oh, thank you. Amazing. I remember when you were telling me like, girl, you need to do something with these spicy tips. Like you need to, you need to be on your social regularly, like giving right, this advice yeah. out. But you've always been like business mindset and go getter from like day one to the point where you would be like a go to person to ask for advice on how to do stuff. So you, you are continuously killing it. We're going to talk about relationships. <laughs> But the way that I open up my show mm -hmm. is my spice breaker. Mm -hmm. So all guests have to start off with when did you first fall in love with yourself? Um, it's funny because I just recently fell re fell in love with myself <laughs> like the, over the last month or so. But the first time I fell in love with myself was um, during the time that I was transitioning out of Nicole Bitchy mm. to Exo Nicole. Um, I hadn't transitioned out yet what I was preparing to so I moved to Scottsdale Arizona from LA and just being out there knowing I was gonna no longer have Nicole Bitchy attached to my name mm -hmm. and trying to figure out who I was outside of that because all all of my self-worth <laughs> was wrapped up in Nicole Bitchy oh wow being her so um I think during that period being out there in solitude not knowing anyone from the entertainment industry yeah. and being able to redefine who I was outside of like career accomplishments. Mm. Like that's when I fell in love with myself and who I was to the core. Like I started taking Pilates and getting into different like healings and stuff like that. And like when you're a celebrity gossip blogger, I don't feel like you're ever present because it's hard. You're spectating people's lives all the time, mm. like living your life as a spectator. So being able to live my life <laughs> as and actually live my life versus spectating others. That's when I was able to fall in love with myself for the first time. Well, wow, because you were able to be present and like experience it versus like know, just looking yeah. like every time you're out. I never thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I remember being out with you and, you know, there being a, um, I, I remember one time like we went to eat and I remember just having a conversation with you about some of the challenges that come with even being a part of a, a gossip column like that. And that having that, you know, that media platform where people could love you one moment or hate you for, you know, mm -hmm. what you put mm -hmm. out energy wise, that had to have been draining on you. Oh my gosh. The energy was so, and you attract toxic people mm. because <laughs> you're doing something very toxic. Posting toxic stuff. <laughs> yeah. And so, I mean, I was attracting all types of scammers around me oh, and wow. just people that were looking for fame and they felt the fastest way to get it was to like through me. Mm. Um, so, oh my gosh. Like, let me tell you, it's not a day go by that I regret. <laughs> You know, some people like sometimes I mourn things like maybe the amount of money I was making back then mm -hmm. or like feeling like I was kind of free at the moment to just jump on a plane and go anywhere. Yeah. Um, but I always say if it costs you your piece is too expensive and it cost me my piece. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you just said right now, though, you fell you re fell in love with yourself recently. What was that? Yeah, because I'm going through my third transition. Like, you know, I left my um, website, Exo Nicole, in September of last year. And, you know, I'm kind of running my happy flow full time. But I was still in the industry, in a sense, when I switched over from Nicole Bitchy to Exo still Nicole. Still media, yeah. Still media. So it was like, it's almost like I did a switch, but it was still something comfortable and something I knew. Mm -hmm. Um. And so, again, my self-worth was attached to <laughs> being a meter mogul. <laughs> and, and so leaving in September, I went through this 
dark place of trying to redefine myself again. Yeah. Like, but this time I'm going into a whole different industry. There's some imposter syndrome there because mm. I don't want to be written off as like a random gossip blogger now pushing yeah, yeah, women's yeah. hormones. Products. Like, yeah. yeah. When, and so it, it was just a lot, but I think through, and we'll talk about later a dating situation and that transition out of Exo Nicole to like really blossom into who God in yeah. intended for me to be. It's been so beautiful. It was painful in the first three months. I was in a fetal position. Oh, I'm sure. And then it's like the cloud just moved and I started to see the sun again. <laughs> I feel like yeah. it's a process, though, right? It so is. I, it is. I love how vulnerable you are, though, and even coming on here because, you know, I've, I have I know how busy you are. Um, but you even being willing to share, like, your testimony, like, lets other people know, okay, you, you guys can reinvent yourself as many freaking yeah. times as you want. Because I think we get into a space where we choose a career or a partner, a home or a city, and we are like, okay, I made this big decision. Now I have to stick with it. When yeah. sometimes you might find like, hey, it doesn't necessarily serve me. Yeah. I want to experience something else. So I kind of want you to, and the point of this is like for us to really help people and educate them mm -hmm. on how to reinvent themselves. I want you to talk about the first reinvention and then we'll talk about the second reinvention. So like first time when you're doing a... Uh, Nicole Bitchy, yeah. how did you know that we needed the reinvention? How do we know that we needed to transition out Ooh, of I knew, I knew that within two years of, of having the site, but I, you know, I did it for seven. Seven seems to be my number of completion. Mm -hmm. So I did it with both. Um, but I feel like the moment like you start waking up, it's hard to get out of bed mm. and plug into whatever your job is for that day or your career that's a clear sign. <laughs> and if it's something within the career that like, you know, there was a point where I was waking up uh, earlier this year and I just felt like I had so many responsibilities in my happy flow. I would never leave my happy flow because I love the company. Yeah. I love helping the customers. It was just like, okay, how do I get me too happy? Yeah. And it, it was in me delegating. Mm. So it, it you have to be clear on, is it the job I got to leave yeah. or the career? Or is it just something that has to change within, within my job or career? Yeah. yeah. So that I can, because what happens with uh, entrepreneurs, a lot of times uh, we have a passion and we turn it into a business, yep. but then that business stuff comes like we, yep. we're spending like 90% of our time doing stuff in the business we don't enjoy. Facts. <laughs> the operations let me tell and you I right think, there uh, there was a book i read i forgot which one and it was like you're supposed to spend 70 percent of your time in your zone of genius yeah but what we do we'll start hiring people to do the jobs we love mm, yep <laughs> yep and, and do the heavy you, lifting because we want to control and make sure it comes out excellent absolutely yeah, but we're sure. doing all the stuff that we do not love and then we fall out of love with the career yeah. when really it's just make delegate in the stuff we don't like yep. to the other people, but making sure we stay doing the stuff that made us passionate in the beginning anyway. So, so. how did, how did the first transition go from, okay, uh, Nicole Bitchy to Exo Nicole, because that was all female empowerment. So you yeah. literally went from gossip blogging, gossip blogging <laughs> to to, yeah. love yourself, love thy neighbor. Right, absolutely. Like you, I am woman, hear me roar. How did that shift I happen? I will say moving to Arizona right before I did the, and then people seeing me go through my own personal journey with like fitness and wellness. So when I did do the transition, it made sense to the people who had started following yeah. that was following my personal pages so it's almost like transitioning my site into something that more represents who I am and gossip no longer represented me like yeah. I started that site when I was in my 20s and then now I'm clear in my third I, I actually what happened I had just turned 35 mm. and my parents passed at the ages of 41 and 42 mm -hmm. and so for me getting so close to the ages my mom and my father passed you start looking at life like, OK, if I was to only have seven more years to live, mm. would I be OK with living in it in this way I'm living now? Yeah. And the answer was no. Um, and so that's that was a catalyst, actually, for me, knowing I had to at least switch the direction of the site, um, just knowing that life is so short. And I wanted people at my funeral speaking positively about how, <laughs> I, in fact, 
impacted their lives and not the good tea that I was dishing. Nothing like fair that you like put right. out there. The, the, yeah. Any break babies I might have <laughs> exclusively <Yeah>. like. <laughs> so yeah, that that's what made me transition. But what happened? I, I moved out to. Sometimes when you go through like a reinvention process, you have to move away from any everything, like everyone because they're gonna have they have a perception of who they mm, think you are yep. so it's almost like That's... you feel like you hit a ceiling right and so I had to move from my friends my family people who knew me so that I could reinvent myself in the right way so relocation such, relocation yeah. and then it sounds like a, a little bit of isolation away isolation from yep every their, every their perspective of you absolutely and then I remember this guy this publicist um, was like, how are you going to stay relevant? And that was the last thing on my mind, staying relevant. Like, yeah. <laughs> like because I feel like, like if I'm not you're, trying to be in everybody's mouth. <laughs> right. If, I, if I'm not relevant for the right reasons, I don't want to be relevant at all. So it wasn't about relevancy. But it's funny how we, our worth is caught up in things like people talking about us, uh, you know, how many people are tagging us or likes we get and stuff. So I went to Arizona and I linked up with this lady who worked at a uh, complex at the time. Mm -hmm. And my friend said she was helping like entrepreneurs transition, that type of thing. She was basically an accountability partner. Yeah. Like she came in, helped me pick a date on the calendar. And then we worked backwards. What I need to do leading up to yep. that date. Um, and so, yeah, I picked a date and she was like my accountability. You know, we were talking on the phone. I don't know if it was once a week or once a month. And I knew I was going to write a letter and put it on the site <laughs> and tell everybody, I'm sorry, but I, I got to I gotta do what's best for me. Um, and I'm transitioning in my life and I need, you know, the work that I do to align with that. So. And what's also better for mankind, right? So, Absolutely. Because like it's also the energy that you, you know, put out there is affecting many lives. So Absolutely. there has to have been also something, you know, karmically around it, something, you know, even spiritually around it mm -hmm. that you probably feel in like a tug at your heart. It may have even been like Jesus on your, you know, shoulder <laughs> or angel, whatever that may be. But like at a certain point, maybe we hear a calling and we're like afraid, but we push through anyway. Yeah. So I love the accountability partner. So relocation, isolation, maybe. Um accountability partner yeah yeah and then absolutely. how did we start so to like, that would be like a coach or something yeah. like that like somebody to keep you on the because everybody else especially if you're successful and you're making a lot of money or you got a lot of fame they're gonna wonder like anybody you talk to and say hey i'm thinking about leaving this why mm -hmm. like you know <laughs> it's not for you to understand um and so that's why you may need that like coach therapist somebody yeah to like help you through the process and then what do conversations look like with your friends when you're telling them like hey y'all i'm about to completely 100 like do 100 percent shift in my yeah career path. i felt like at times i was more complaining than anything <laughs> <laughs> and so i'm like i think but honestly me isolating and just not sharing a lot of my future moves with people so that they would wouldn't talk me out of it mm. helped me get through that transition and then talk to me a little bit about belief, because I feel like sometimes it, the way you know why we don't make the shift in, you know, our reinvention of our identity, or our image is because we don't know if, if we're capable. We don't right? we don't know, like maybe the work involved, but then also maybe we've never had to make a drastic move like that yeah. before. How did you like affirm yourself or the belief that you could do it? You know, I, I've, I've hit rock bottom many times. So I knew, <laughs> I mean, once you down there, you know, that much farther to go. I think for me, um, I, I, I will say um, I was naive in my transition. I think if I knew more, I wouldn't have did it because I hadn't, pl mm. I hadn't really plotted out how I was going to make money. I just knew I had this amount in my bank account and I have enough to cover like this new team mm -hmm. I'm going to bring in and it's this vision. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't realize how fast that money was going to like my bank yeah. account was depleting by the week and I hadn't figured out. I don't know if I thought Google ads was going to hold me down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what what I thought, but I mean, I had to start moving quickly because like my webs, my server bill for Nicole B at the time was $3,000 a month. Mm. 
And, you know, switching over to a new site, my traffic going to drop. Why am I still in a $3,000 a month right, contract? <laughs> oh, oh, right. I got a bill they got to pay. Like I had to start downsizing things. Hey, we don't need this much server anymore. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was, but I didn't think to even do all of that until maybe four or five months in and I'm running out of money by the minute. So that can be scary, right? Because then we're like maybe panicking and trying mm-hmm. to figure out mm-hmm. like what to do. Yeah. But you sound like you, you said if you had to redo it, you would have done it differently. Um, but are you happy that you took the risk? And I bet am. On yourself? Because I might have, I might have been still running the site because of all these what ifs and how am I going to make money and how I'm going to do that. It's mm-hmm. almost like I jumped off a ledge and was like, I know the parachute will open and I'm going to figure it out. But that's how bad I wanted to change my life. Yeah. Because it wasn't just changing my career. This is about my life, my future. So I'm super proud that you did that. But then <laughs> we decide we're going to do my happy flow. Mm-hmm. Okay. When was that second decision of, so great, I got Exo Nicole off yeah. the ground. But you know what? I'm going to transition again. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened is. I, you know, I launched uh, X on the call and I was very fortunate after I ran out of money and I was like, <laughs> Lord, what was I thinking? I was very fortunate to have my site acquired by Will Packer, yeah. a Hollywood producer. And so that was two years in. And what happens when you sell your webs? Well, sell any brand. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times they'll keep you on board as the CEO or consultant editor in chief something for at least the first two years um and then also you end up there's so much to like I knew nothing about acquisitions when Mm -hmm. he came to I I don't even know if I even heard the word before or I might have heard the word but didn't understand it yeah um and the only person I had known that had ever sold something that was a black woman was Lisa Price at the time Mm. I knew she had sold Carol's daughter yeah so I didn't know what it meant for me but I knew I wasn't going to get the backlash that she got because I was like well at least I'm selling to somebody that's black um but it's I didn't like I I felt as soon as I sold my site I felt like I was back kind of salaried position nine to five and I didn't plan for how different it is to yeah. just be able to set salary versus when you out here doing your thing as a influencer yep. or and them checks is coming in left and right it's a different lifestyle it was yeah. a different it humbled me <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> and again it was something I didn't prepare for so the first few months I got all these expenses going out but that check is looking little itty bitty. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I feel like, so this next point that you're hitting on then, I feel like a part of reinvention you're saying is um, prepare for that. Prepare fun. for hitting sometimes the bottom and the humility that comes Absolutely. with it. Absolutely. And normally when you make a transition like that, the first few years is going to be rough. You, you're, If you're lucky, you, you can have a seamless transition, but m- more than likely your income level is going to change for a minute. Yeah. You know, why you're figuring um, everything out. Um, and so you just got to prepare for that. You know, the way you're living expenses, like yeah. <laughs> just everything. If you're and a responsible just, person. Right. You if you're responsible, you I was irresponsible that. every single time. <laughs> Girl, you're probably better than me. I'm like Excel spreadsheet. How, well, how do I do that? <laughs> yeah. I was irresponsible in every one of my transitions, I feel. But it has always worked out for you. Yeah, absolutely. And I because I feel like no matter what you lose, it's going to come back to you tenfold each time. Um, Especially when you're doing the right thing and you're serving people Mm -hmm. in, in the right way. Um, If I was going backwards, like going from X on Nicole to Nicole, bitch, you probably not. I'm not going to get my good karma, but because you're going forward, you know, like, okay, I'm making the right transition. And then how did my happy flow come up? Where was this? Where I need to create these magic pills that heal you. (laughs) Yeah, well, it was an accumulation of a lot of moments in my life. Like during the transition from Nicole Bitchy to Exo Nicole, I was in Arizona and I'm taking holistic nutrition. And because when I was out there, I wanted to know how I could prevent myself from getting my mom's breast cancer. Mm. Like she died from breast cancer. And so I started looking into holistic remedies and how to heal yourself through whole foods and vitamins. And I'm just like, everything I ever thought I knew about like (laughs) nutrition, 
I thought, you know, my whole family has been on prescriptions, <laughs> you know, for most of our, you know, we have high blood pressure, stroke, yeah. breast cancer, all Runs that. So <laughs> to know that there are holistic remedies out there and vitamins that you can take, and it's almost like preventative me- measure. It's almost like health insurance or yep. something yep. <laughs> um, that just blew my mind. And the only way I was able to study this is to remove myself from something that was taking up all my time, which was Once Nicole again, Bitchy. <laughs> yeah, we're removing ourselves. Yeah, okay. so even when Will Packer came to, uh, present it to me that he wanted to buy my website, he first wanted me to come work for him, but he was, I just kept telling him I wasn't interested. And he was just like, what's going, like, mm-hmm. you know, is it that you don't want to be in entertainment? And I was like, no, I'm studying holistic nutrition. Like, mm. I knew I was going to he- help heal women in some type of way. Yeah. But what happened was, um, when I went after he brought my site, I put the holistic nutrition stuff on hold. Mm. Um, but I came back around to it at some point. So what I was going to say earlier is when you sell your site, you look, you're, I'm no longer in control anymore. Yeah. And I don't know. I, I, that dynamic was hard for me. Releasing control. I, I actually just had depression the five years that, cause I ended up, I told you, uh, they normally have you stay on for two. I, I did a three year contract and then I stayed on for five total, but I had depression the entire five years. Because you were no longer in the leadership yeah, of absolutely. the company. Okay. Of, like it's almost like uh, I had this baby, but somebody else is oh like, and God. I know yeah, I'm birthed, still in the you room, the but <laughs> and now someone else is raising it and you're like, dang, but like, yeah. I created you. Yeah. yeah. That has and to be so hard. just having to ask for permission for things and, It was very challenging to me. And so I was just so much anxiety and depression, not knowing like if one day the rug would be pulled from underneath of me. And it's like, Mm -hmm. we no longer need you. Like, it's just so many things. And it affected my friendships, my, you know, dating life, everything, because I wasn't happy. So that's, again, where my happy flow uh, came into play. I remember December 2021, was 2020 the end of the pandemic year, being on the phone and crying, saying I'm not happy Hmm. to like the CEO of Will Packer Media. And it's nothing that, and I said, it's nothing that you you're doing or that you could do better. I, I just knew that I lacked purpose and I had to find my next thing. You were in a state. Yeah. Yeah. You were in a state and you needed to rediscover and reinvent. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So I wrote in my journal, I was like, Cause I was supposed, I was about to put out a, a planner called Manifest the uh, Hello Dream Life Manifestation Planner, mm-hmm. and I was like, "How am I selling this manifestation <laughs> plan? I'm not even living my dream life." <laughs> and I wrote in my journal, "You got one year to get to your dream life." Mm. I was like, I knew I had to change things around yeah. me, and so I, I, one day, th- two months later in March, the idea for my Happy Flow came about to me I mean it's almost like God came to me in a dream with the ingredients (laughs) and you know what it would do for women especially um women who suffer from fibroids and period trauma yeah um and I was already familiar with the ingredients that I have in my happy flow because they were a part of my vitamin routine yeah (laughs) and I had what I like to call perfect periods or peaceful periods oh my god I'm so jelly of that (laughs) because Because let me tell you, when I first saw my happy flow, I was like, where was this when my doctors forced Man, birth, birth control, control on me? Exactly. And, you know, they I, I went through several tests to try to figure out why my period was a month long mm-hmm. and then be gone for three weeks. And oh, then, my uh, God. Two months. Like, I've literally had the yeah. craziest periods growing up. So I was like, why didn't this exist? And, you know, come to find out I had PCOS. But had this existed, I wouldn't have been on, you know, the Nuva ring for Oh my so gosh, long. yes. And that's the I think that's the biggest part of my company knowing that for a long time we didn't have any option outside of like when we go to the doctor about mm-hmm. painful periods. Birth control. Yeah. Sometimes they don't even and the thing is, a lot of us don't know that your period isn't supposed to be painful. Um, and it's not you're not supposed to have PMS, like the bloating, the cramping. Really? Any of that. Like, that's hallmark signs. I thought of, that was the, no. the the curse from Eve because no, we gave Adam none an apple. of that. You're not <laughs> supposed to have that. That's a hallmark sign that you have hormonal imbalances. But the dangerous part of that is 
most women have a hormonal imbalance called estrogen dominance. Mm. So you have excess levels of estrogen in the body in comparison to progesterone. So why that's dangerous is um, estrogen dominance leads to fibroids. Mm. Um, having a hormonal imbalance where you have more estrogen than progesterone. It also leads to um, PCOS is kind of in that bracket. Like you can have estrogen dominance and PCOS, but endometriosis, um, breast cancer. Mm. So that goes back to my mom, family, you know, yeah. like she had painful periods. I didn't know. I had no idea all that these things are connected. That's so these crazy. are all connected. Like your period is your body's monthly report card. Wow. And it's like, it's giving you valuable insight yeah. into your overall health. <laughs> For and sure. what you need to, but what happens we normally go to the doctor and they just they don't test us for the condition they just say hey get on this birth control which is synthetic hormones and what happens is most people who have a reproductive condition it gets worse so say you if they didn't treat your pcos mm -hmm. because they didn't test you for it they put you on birth control your pcos might have gotten worse during that time like <laughs> But that's happened to a lot of people, though. Like, yeah. I feel like that has happened to a lot of people. So what? when would we decide to take, like, my happy flow? I would say anyone that has a a painful period, um, your periods are long. Your periods aren't supposed to be longer than uh, three to seven days. Um, if you're on your period for three weeks at a time, like, yes, you should go to your doctor <laughs> because these are telltale signs. Go to the, signs. Doctors. Like, go go to to the doctor. Doctors. But like most of the women that come to us, they have prolonged periods. They have very heavy periods. If you're changing your tampon every hour on the hour, that's that's too heavy of a flow. Um, when they're trying to transition off of birth control and they think their hormones are going to go crazy. they yeah. don't. Or a lot of women will say, well, when I got on birth control, like all my period problems stopped. Because your period on the birth control, especially birth control pills, is a fake period. Yeah, well, isn't it, your body? <laughs> it's a withdrawal bleed. Thinking from the, that you're pregnant, like it's telling, it's sending it's, hormones to your body. So what your happens? Body. Yeah, um, for birth control pills, you got three weeks of hormones in those pills, and mm -hmm. then the last week doesn't. So that's a withdrawal bleed that mm -hmm. you get every month, um, and then you go back into the the weeks with the hormones. Yeah. <laughs> So it's, but see, a lot of us don't know this. We're not, we don't. On this, and that's right? why we created my happy flow because it's not even about the all natural product. That's going to help fix your period problems by addressing the root cause, which is inflammation, hormonal imbalances <laughs> and micronutrient deficiencies. But Oof. we also need to do education. We yeah. need to educate women on what an, a healthy menstrual cycle looks like. And also like symptoms of, those hormonal imbalances that may lead to fibroids later on or PCOS or endometriosis. Yeah, for sure. I feel like um, this would be great too if we're someone who has maybe, you know, headaches during our pregnancy. I mean, during our um, period. If, or, low energy, mood swings, bloating. Yeah, also all the it, symptoms. All those, I get bloated during my yeah, period. Yeah, it, it reduces, like, you shouldn't have, it's my first time having a period um, on DIM, which is our hero ingredient. I thought I had been lied to my entire life. Like, <laughs> like, I'm like, what? This is a, this is what we're supposed to feel like yeah, on our period. And it's I thought. not supposed to be <laughs> no pain. Like it comes that like my back's not supposed to hurt. I'm none of that. To, like, like break out, like none of that. I still have a good mood. I can function on day <laughs> one and two. I can, I don't have to plan my life around it anymore. So yeah. Oh, I love this. Okay. So we, we're we we're operating from a mobile mindset. We are giving ourselves permission to fail, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. Picking ourselves back mm -hmm. up, reinventing ourselves continuously because you've given yourself permission to take this, you know, these risks. Yeah, absolutely. But what advice would you give to someone who their career mm -hmm. has become their identity? Mm. Because there's a lot of us very successful women out there that are defined by yeah. what we do for a living, right? Like yeah. we wear it proudly mm -hmm. on our chest and we dedicate so much time and energy to that thing. Sometimes not having a fair balance of relationship plus career. We focus so highly on where we can excel and what we mm -hmm. know we have control of and put all <clears throat> our energy into that. So what advice would you give someone who's doing that? Um, Honestly, like it takes a lot of self-work, work of knowing 
a lot of for me it was a lot of journaling and self work like self yeah self work is <laughs> I'm getting that mixed up with self worth right self -work. um but just trying to figure out who I was outside of my career um is is interesting now because I barely rarely ever. I never lead with lead with my career when I'm dating or whatever. <laughs> like, but um, sometimes, first of all, it's creating hobbies outside of your career mm -hmm. first. Like something and hobbies are things. Cause people, we like to find things. It, it's a hobby, and then right. we want to monetize it. And that was work, girl. <laughs> like, like for real. What are your hobbies outside of your? career things that you enjoy doing and you're not getting paid for <laughs> yes um definitely I started like you know I don't have a family right now in terms of like you know husband and kids and so I had to start spending a lot more time with different friends mm. and I do one-on-one -on -one time but and I'm saying this as important because you really have to define yourself and how you're impacting people outside of your career. Like yep. if you took, if I, if you took my career away and what I'm doing with my happy flow, how am I still showing up for other people? Yep. Great and point. also myself, how am I impacting their lives outside of my, my work? Um, and so I think, getting clear on that. I know moms sometimes get caught up in the mom title and don't yes. know who they are outside of yes. being a mom. Yep, that happens, right? That happens yeah. all the time. I'm counseling um, women and families all the time on that. Like, what does that look like when we, you know, aren't purely diving into just the kids Absolutely. or, you know, just our job. So I, I love that you are also exploring this part of not just like the passions and hobbies part because that's so important. Yeah, absolutely. But also what relationships can I nurture? How can I pour absolutely. into other people? Because sometimes when we, we're just working, I was the worst friend. I wasn't at anybody's <laughs> baby showers. I wasn't at anybody's birthdays. I might've missed a few weddings. Like I was not worried about how I was showing up in anybody's life. Yeah. Um, and that matters because you want people showing up for you in the same Facts. way when you Facts. have like these milestones you're reaching. And so for me, I'm like, I can't go out in the world and say, I don't have, I don't, I don't have friends like that mm -hmm. because I'm not being a friend. That's mm -hmm. why like anyone that says I don't have close friends, are you being a friend? Yeah. When I started showing up for people, <laughs> remembering birthdays, showing up for the festivities, I got a wide friend circle. circle yeah. I got more friends now than I've ever had in my life. <laughs> so then what did you do? Because someone may be saying like, well, dang, I haven't reached out to friends. I have been mm -hmm, all about my career. Mm -hmm. Did you phone them or text them and say like, hey, I apologize for being absent in your life? Like how did, what did, how did you? I think I naturally, um, so I'm a person, like I know a lot of people like to do a uh, group outings because mm -hmm. you can hit everybody at yeah. one time <laughs> but for me it's difficult to establish intimacy with another person in group settings like that and so I do a lot of it wears me out but I do do a lot of oh I haven't talked to her in a while let me reach out to her and invite her to lunch mm. let's go do drinks or that type of thing and again it wears me out because I'm doing these one-on-ones but it's because I want I don't want a lot of surface level relationships you want real quality time. I want real quality and I know if we're in a group setting, we all have different intimacy levels with yep. each other. So yep. we're not going to get into the the deep stuff Facts. that we do if we were one on one. Facts. Yeah. So, I mean, that has fulfilled me so much because, like I said, I don't have these surface level relationships anymore. Like I have these deep, deep seated relationships with various friends. So. Yes, I hear pouring into friendships. Mm -hmm. What about love life? Because a lot of people will use their career as an excuse mm -hmm. for why they haven't mm -hmm. nurtured romantic <laughs> love life. You are, see we how doing, she are we doing you that, see how, <laughs> see how she tried to transition in that? Like, what's going on? <laughs> <clears throat> what's the love life looking like? What's my love life? What's the <laughs> love looking, life looking like? I am currently, currently dating. And when we say dating, we're like, you're getting to know somebody. You're going on dates He's, with them. It's We're like not, courtship process. Not a, it's the courtship. Yeah. It's not a title on it. In it right now. That's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So was it a situation where uh, we, once I hit these numbers or these career goals, then I will focus on love life or did you find proper time and balance? No, that was okay. what I was doing. But I tell my girlfriends now, like, Cause I hear them say the same exact thing. That marker is always moving. Mm -hmm. You <laughs> so if you say 
when I accomplish this, yep. then then I can start dating. And we do that all the time. For sure. The marker continues to move. So <laughs> I mine pushed back so much that now I'm in my 40s. Like, and I've and am I gonna give up like three to five more years of my life because oh I gotta wait until I get my happy flow to this certain level yeah in all these retail stores before I pour into my personal life no I'm not doing so that. how do we make that switch then because I do remember you know times when you were like crazy busy with yeah. working you're like I don't got you know really yeah. time to dedicate mm-hmm. you know I want to date but you didn't necessarily have time to and then you also just said that entrepreneurship usually looks like 90% of your time yeah. sometimes going to, you know, the work. When did you make time? I, I made a con you have to make a conscious effort to make time. Um, I, I was talking to my friend the other day and she was just like, I'm going to, I'm going to get back to the, the dating and the apps. Once I launch this and this and mm-hmm. this, I, he, she said the work, she said, when I get go, you know, and I start dating, the work can't stop. I said, but you see how the dating can stop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll, comp- I'll compromise the level. Yeah, yeah, the dating can stop when you're focused on work, but the work can't stop. Mm-hmm. And and so I didn't want to live my life like that anymore. I knew for me to show up for people in the way that I want to and my business, I had to have a personal life and I had to start feeling love and partnership. Um, I just couldn't see myself growing a brand like this and not pouring into my personal life um I was gonna be I was gonna start being resentful at some Mm. point so I think me pouring into myself and my personal life helps me relate to the customers a lot more and just women in general like it, it it made me more feminine and more just human mm. I feel like when you just focus on work all the time it's almost like robotic yeah you're a machine yeah I felt I feel like I'm more of a a, a human being <laughs> <laughs> well balanced full, full full blown adult a human being mm-hmm. so tell me who you are who's Nicole single versus who's Nicole with a man that she's smitten with <laughs> What are the differences did we, between those did we go? Did we go all the way there yet? Um, <laughs> um, Nicole's single. She just super focused on work and, and getting to the goal, whatever that goal is, because I always have all these dreams. Um, Nicole, when she's dating someone she's smitten with, um, she has hard cutoff times for her work. She might even work three day work weeks, <laughs> three or four day work weeks. Um, she takes a lot of time out for herself with her music and her candles and like really um, things that are pleasurable for her. Mm. You know, uh, there's massage days and she's pouring into herself more. Yeah. Um, and yeah, because I know that re- that affects how I show up in my dating relationships, too. So yeah, I'm nurturing it. Uh, Nicole's uh, dating someone. She's nurturing her feminine. Who do we like better, Nicole solo in grind? Nicole mode? dating. Or Nicole dating. No, okay. Nicole dating. <laughs> like and we know that. <laughs> we, we know, and it's funny because when you're dating, you start attracting all these different other men. Yeah. Because you're in your feminine power. For sure. <laughs> Where when you're just like in your single. I'm just going to focus on work. Uh, you know, you're in your masculine. Yeah. And it's, you're not, and you're probably not aware that you're not making eye contact in the way that you should. Like, I live in Atlanta. There's men everywhere. They're in the elevators. They're in the, the grocery store. They're in the- you, can't throw <laughs> the, the you can't throw the trash without running into a man. Like, Oh my goodness. I was just trying to throw the trash real right. quick. Where did you come from? Absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. A lot of times the men are there, but we're like, you know, they get in the elevator and we look down Mm -hmm. or we're in the Uber and we're not making, or we pass them in the grocery store at the gym and we have our headphones on and we're not giving the energy of wanting or yeah. Want to even meet anyone. Yeah. It's not open. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not open. So I had to be aware of my even energy day to day as I walk past the concierge. Am I like smiling and and speaking to them? Right. You know, like those little things matter. So when do we add, because you just mentioned earlier, like when you have a goal, you go after it and get everything you want. What would we say the relationship goal is? 
right now. Mm-hmm. Like my relationship go, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> You know, in my current dating situation, when we first started dating, it was a um, absolutely not for me. And it's because it was a long distance. And when I say long distance, I mean, girl, we're not talking about like three hours out of town. We talking about a five and a half hour plane ride. And that's so, a long flight. That, yeah. That's, you know, like. I need <laughs> breakfast, lunch and dinner on that flight. Oh, flag. my goodness. <laughs> and so it, it just seemed unrealistic for me. Like, how are, how are we going to make this work? Like, this this just doesn't make sense. Yeah. So we had a great first date. It was as perfect a first date as it could be. But always in the back of my mind, it's such a long distance. Um, but he stayed consistent. And it was during a season where I did want to be by myself. I had just left X on Nicole. I wanted, you know how you want to go through your three to six month life? Uh-huh. And I remember telling God, like, God, I want, I'm ready to prepare myself for my person. I've mm. given up the second career, you know, mm-hmm. I'm only focused. So I have, I have a space for someone to come in now. And I've, I, I met this guy maybe weeks later. And it's funny because God always brings somebody in my life when I say I'm getting prepared. I didn't realize why at first, but it's hard to see your triggers and your wounds in your single season. Nobody's just <laughs> That you, part. Like you, you can convince yourself in your single season that you're healthy and whole. Yep. I love myself. Yep. Do you love yourself when someone's there with that mirror? <laughs> Fact. Like, the universe will test you, right? Oh, you think you're healed. Oh, oh you, you think, think yeah. you know great conflict resolution. Let's try. Let's, let's, <laughs> right. And so the I now look back and I see why I met someone because it was supposed to be growth season, especially when it comes to my personal life. Yeah. And one thing I did, I did realize recently, I was so addicted to that first four to six week stage in the beginning of dating, of dating the honeymoon. Yep. Like loves that phase when they love bombing or when mm-hmm. <laughs> a lot of men love bomb during that stage or when like, you know, they're very consistent in everything. Yep. Like I got addicted to that. And so what would happen after that stage was over and, you know, things start shifting. Reality kicks in. Yeah. I would jump to the next person uh. or I'm going back to single. So I lacked accountability. I lacked conflict resolution skills. I lacked all the things, communication, yeah. communicate my needs. I lacked all of those things because I would jump out of things very quickly once that honeymoon stage was up. Because I just took the the shift. As, oh, they're just seeing somebody else or they don't like me as much. Yeah. <laughs> when really you might be being challenged in this moment and how are we going to get through this challenge? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right? Because that's really what creates long-term relationships. Yeah. It's not about the good times. Right. It's about how to right. work through the hard times. <laughs> right. Right. Absolutely. Even when it comes to business, which you're an expert at, it's not like, okay, how do I get these sales? It's also, okay, well, what do I do when the sales aren't coming through? Right. Like, how do I shift to, you know, the next? How do we work through this, you know, downtime? And I think people think that it's supposed to be the honeymoon phase for their entire life. Yeah. Oh, no. That's, I learned that fairly quickly. It's like, <laughs> girl, if you want a long-term partner, you're going to have to stay, like, when it's burning, like, stay in the fire <laughs> and burn. I, I like to call it that because, it, you know, I, it gets to a stage where it's very uncomfortable for me. And my my biggest thing is to run like because I I had an anxious attachment style mm-hmm. and I also had fear of abandonment because yeah. I lost my parents and very important people in my life. So sense. when a guy is there, I'm thinking about that moment he withdraws. So things that used to trigger me was my friend would um, good morning. You know, the good morning. The good morning text. And yeah. I, I know that that's hard. Me. I'm so tired of the good morning text. Yeah, I'm but like, it's, and, and the women, it makes them nervous because can you maintain that? Right. Can you keep it up? Yeah, because they know the moment that you don't send that good morning text, what's going on? Yeah. And so I was triggered by the good morning text. <laughs> but then he did it for like three months straight. And I was like, I started like, okay. I started like expecting it a certain time mm-hmm. so it would be about 7 30 my time 4 30 his time in the morning so i'd hear ding okay you know <laughs> ding okay we're good <laughs> but then uh, if it got later i'm like what's going on so yeah i was triggered by good morning text i was triggered by just how healthy um he, i won't say his love was but like his healthy community communication style just it being healthy mm-hmm. and not chaotic 
Um, I was triggered by that. Like it, I didn't know what to do with that. See, and here you are all along wanting that to show up for you. But Absolutely. then when it's in front of you, Absolutely. a part of you is already, you know, this, this anxiousness comes from the fear of, of course, loss. Yeah. But absolutely. then you start preparing yourself for that. And that's what I'm always coaching people on is like getting out of their own way because mm-hmm. you will start to manifest the thing that you are afraid of. Absolutely. And so Absolutely. how did you <laughs> prevent the self-sabotage? <sighs> um, Honestly, the thing that worked in his favor is it was the first time a guy I, I feel didn't love bomb me in the beginning. Mm. Like, I don't feel like he went into it with a lot of like I, I meet a lot of guys, especially in Atlanta, and there's they're hypersexual. Yeah. They might start sending me dick pics <laughs> without me Lord asking for them. Me. Or, you know, it's always like the conversation's always sexual and he did he didn't come at me in that way. It was almost like I was talking to him on a regular basis every day, but it felt like and it could be tricky because it felt like a male friend. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> So he really got through to me through emotional intimacy first. Mm. Um, so important. Yeah. And so. Which is why we should establish the friendships first. Right. Absolutely. If I don't like you as a friend, why would I transition you to a lover? Absolutely. And I know like it was it was about three months in and like we hadn't even kissed yet. You know, so that was oh, we like, were going real slow, Nicole. This is good. I was, love it. It was prop, pop, slow. I was a slow cooker. This is like good. we put her in that. Like I was this normally was patient, in the microwave. Man. Okay, <laughs> I was in the microwave for a lot of the uh, because I was looking back on a lot of my dating relationships, and one thing that bothered me with a lot of them was that I felt like like the the sexual um, part happened fairly quick more quick than I wanted it yeah to. yeah we're usually and it was like so I had to ask really. myself is it like do you have a problem with like setting that boundary mm-hmm. and saying I don't feel comfortable like why go forward with it are you scared of messing up the moment and then the, like you know I had to have a come to Jesus moment yeah and I knew um the next thing that I got into I I could not had like go into the sexual um within the first few weeks it had to like and so yeah <laughs> yeah I, w- I was like I can't do that again that's hard for a lot of women though and you know you guys hear me all the time talking about um not making sexual intimacy or physical intimacy the first thing we deep dive mm-hmm. into but it's not to make him chase it's not yeah. to like think that we're dangling this little carrot it really is like, can I get to know you on these other levels of intimacy? Can I develop a, a deeper bond with you? What do we have to share before we get, you know, biologically attached to one another? Absolutely. Let me see what we really have common interests invested in one another. I want to make sure it's not lust. Right. Like, I want to make sure I actually really like you, your character and who you are. Let's as a make person. sure we're compatible. First. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. And so, um, yeah, I felt like. It was kind of like our first date was more of like uh, um, paint, you know, the the paint class. Oh, cute. So it was more like in the daytime and it led into the night because he ended up putting a bookshelf together for me that night. Acts like, of service. Now like, you're talking that talk. That's yeah, oh, my he's turn really on big on there. acts of service. Fix like he wanted to change, switch my wife, <laughs> switch your wiper out. He put my bookshelf together. <laughs> And then the dates after that was like a museum, which was earlier in the morning. Like, so it was more like, like we started like, yeah, most of our dates was daytime hours. So that's how you can kind of get around. You were in the same zone. (laughs) Versus like the first, you know, a late dinner with Mm -hmm. drinks. (laughs) And not even like those late nights in the clock. What's up? What you doing? Like, no, you cannot come over, sir. Yeah. No, not at all. No, we're not doing that. So. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm I'm glad that we started in that way, very slow, like you said. But mm-hmm. it but was I love I love that you are making space for this part of your life because it's something that I know that you've always wanted. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean anything until you actually are doing the work behind it, right? So you're actually like creating room for your heart to expand and adding a person into it. Absolutely. And there's so many things I had to, like when he first met me, I just had a really bad fear of, a, of abandonment. And it's probably because I had just left my website too. So that added to it. Yeah. Um, you know, having this baby and feeling like you're giving it up and somebody else is raising it. 
Um, so I, and then I had, like I said, uh, anxious attachment style. Yeah. Like, so if a pattern, if his, his pattern changed. Was the switch to feminine energy easy for you? Because oftentimes when you are running your own business or just in a position of power period, no matter what, you know, company you're in, you are oftentimes in your masculine energy, mm-hmm. your energy of doing, mm-hmm. executing, directing, leading. Then going into, okay, I don't want to be in work mode. Was it a, a little switch that we flipped? How did we turn on feminine energy for relationship? I actually studied, uh, back in 2020, I started studying feminine energy. Good you job. know, Good job. So yes. I had to like, at least because there are some people that just don't want to hear anything about you talking about feminine energy. What is that? Why is that? (laughs) I know. But for me, I know I wanted to live a softer life and I wanted, I wanted the man to step up. And I knew for, because I have a lot of friends that say, Oh, why don't men do this, this and this for me? But it's because they think we got it. Right. And so I wanted to present myself as, um, because I can be like, if you Google me, it can be intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> it says media mogul, former celebrity gossip blogger, right, like right. Uh, founder of my happy flow. Yeah. Like I'm in the, the supplement industry. It can be very intimidating for men. And I, I just knew I wanted a masculine man that took charge. Like even on our first date, I did present three Cause he was, he was coming to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. So I presented three things, but I felt like, okay, you got the lead and plan this, but he took control from there. <laughs> like pick time. Wait, and what you he- are hitting a spicy tip right here. Okay. So when Nicole just said, well, she presented three options. This is actually a very um, powerful feminine thing to do because you, you're presenting different options, but then letting him decide which one and then plan from there, making him feel like he's leading the situation. Yeah. But really, okay. you only presented three options you were okay. okay with. Okay, yeah, you're right. So, okay, I'm glad to know that was okay to do because I thought... Very much so. I just I thought, find clients to okay. do that all the time. Okay, Because good. they're so offended when a guy's like, well, what do you want to do? And they're like, oh, I don't want to worry about it. I just want him to take the lead. But sometimes... They he's don't a, know you he's yet. afraid of failing. Like, yeah, he they don't know doesn't you. want to disappoint <laughs> yeah. you. So there's no reward in it for him Absolutely. if he displeases you. So Absolutely. he wants to hit it, get it right. So what we do is we present, just like what you did. I love yeah. that was beautiful. Three <laughs> options. Let him choose. And then he can plan it yeah, from Yeah, he there. planned everything from there. For like, sure. And then, um, and then, I mean, that was the first and last time I ever had to plan any. He took it from there. <laughs> like, you know, like he... Ever, Ever since then, he's made the decision of what we were going to do. And I recently visited him for the first time because he lives in a city I've never been to before. And I just wanted to know what his day to day was like, what his routine was like. Was I going to even like, and there's things like, sometimes I'm like, what is my end goal here? Like you live all the way here. Well, that's the question that I originally asked you. What's the goal? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And yeah. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> and I live here like, is someone moving? Like, are we trying, like, what are we doing? But yeah. I say all that to say, um, even when I came there, he just planned everything from the moment I stepped foot down off the plane to the moment I left and just making sure I uh, went to all these different restaurants. He knew that I probably wouldn't go to in Atlanta, like eating all the different food, mm-hmm. Filipino food and Pan-African food and <laughs> Um, and just giving me experiences. We went out on a hot tub boat in 41 oh, degree I think weather. I saw you yeah. Tell something about that. Yeah. I, we, we started on a, looking that up. I'm like, let me. We were on take a hot tub husband. boat in 41 degree weather, but it was at night on the lake. But it was a experience I would have never gotten anywhere else. And so I enjoyed it. And it sounds <laughs> like, like you were living um, in the moment and appreciating the relationship that you originally kind of had doubts about because of the, dent, the distance. But now you are going with the flow, right? Because you're sitting in your feminine. Yeah. But it looks like it's, oh, so it makes you, it looks, or it feels like, if I made you uncomfortable when I'm asking what the relationship goal is. <laughs> I don't, I'm not requiring you to define yeah, yeah. something with him, but if we were to tell the universe or have a conversation with the universe, yeah. what is our relationship goal? Yeah. Maybe he's not included in it, but yeah. long-term, this is what I want for my love life. Yeah. That's what I want you to speak what to. I want, what I yeah, want for definitely. my love life is, I know now I didn't know back then, mm-hmm. but now, yeah, I do want a partner. I do. I do want to be in a relationship. I haven't went as far as saying I want to be married yet. Cause I'm working through my, 
my Fear. uh, fears and just growing up some of the beliefs and stuff. Um, I, I think I, you know, I said it on a recent, uh, interview, like, cause the guy used to always just mention, like, you sound like a wife, you sound like a wife. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to know what does a wife sound like? Mm-hmm. And then after he explained it to me, I just said, I never, I never envisioned myself as a wife. Like mm-hmm. I never, and I think, not that I don't want to be a wife because I do. Yeah. It's that I think I it was a self-worth thing. I never felt worthy of being someone's wife wow. or that I could even because it seemed like a lot of responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> like a lot of responsibility. This coming from the woman who ran three companies. Uh, so, <laughs> talking about so, being a wife is a lot of But re- now a lot of responsibility. like every day I'm like, <laughs> you know, I could be somebody's wife. I could have partnership. Um I have to think I think being a woman, especially once you reach 40, it's it's a lot of pressure because mm. you still have that biological clock. Yeah. And you feel like you're working to get like every day that clock is ticking in your ear. Um, but I want to enjoy my person and no, I haven't frozen my eggs, but I want to enjoy my person and I don't want me or him to feel pressured from to society, move fast yeah. and, you know, because of a clock and like, I, you know, me and my girlfriend talk because I have one that has, is in a serious relationship and she was so scared to have to talk with her man about. Like she thinks she changed her mind about having kids, mm. you know, and that's a hard, and it's that like, is. We, it's a hard conversation yeah. and, and you got to do check-ins, not just like when we first started, we talked, like I needed to know what his thoughts were on kids and whatever. Cause I went to know if it was an option, but we need to have check-ins every three to six yeah. months, at the, th- every three months at this point, but every six months, like the are same you, way you would in a company do a quarterly review. You need to be doing that with your partner. Absolutely. Sometimes monthly. Like, are we on <laughs> The same page sure. still when it comes to the future, kids, et cetera. For sure. Like, yeah. So it, it's, those are such hard, uncomfortable conversations. But how That's why you... I like the four to six honeymoon. <laughs> I'm the honeymoon stage queen. Because you don't want to have queen. those real I don't have these conversations. <laughs> They're uncomfortable. How did you deal with the pressure of um, going through this period, right, where you're running these businesses and – you don't necessarily have, you know, this magical love life. And Mm -hmm. people are like, you know, Nicole, where's the boyfriend? Where's the husband? How did you deal with that kind of pressure and keeping eye on the prize? I don't know. It's just, again, being once you reach 40, it's so hard because every man that I've ever dated thought I was younger than what I was. Mm. Every man thought I was. I mean, you look young and you got a youthful spirit, girl. (laughs) Every man thought I was in my early 30s. As soon as they know the real age, it goes into that conversation. Do you have kids? Mm. Do you want kids? Yeah. When do you plan on having them? And I'm just like, and, getting real and I get, real quick. and yeah. And my, my anxiety starts flaring up because, <laughs> and then the, it just, it's just weird. So one, it's unfair for people to put their own like judgment and that pressure on you. If yeah. those yeah. aren't your yeah. ideals or your goals, or if you don't even want that pressure on yourself, right? We, we oftentimes will do that just as a human species. We'll do that to each other because of our own fears and concerns. Yeah. And we're putting that off on you. So Absolutely. It, I'm, I'm sorry that I've, you experienced yeah. that. I just feel rushed all the time yeah. in my dating experience. And I, I don't want to feel like enjoy that. enjoy my son because I'm already being pressured about where's kid number two. Oh my gosh. Can like, I can, enjoy this one? Right. <laughs> It, but we're going back to what my relationship goal is to be now that I'm being completely transparent with myself. I do want to be in a relationship. I do want a life partner. If that means marriage, then I do want that because um, I'm challenging all my prior beliefs and what marriage looks like and what all, you know, all the above looks like. So is it safe to say that um just like how you did. And you guys are going to hear my little baby in the background. Um, again, his beautiful voice. That's Princeton. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he just got home from daycare. But um, what I'm talking to Nicole about right now is, you know, 
her being honest with herself about wanting a relationship. And I think that a lot of us will deny ourselves love because we don't think either there's room for it or we're afraid of not getting it. So mm -hmm. it's easier to say, I don't want this thing. Mm -hmm. But just like how you did with reinventing yourself when it came to your careers, you sound like you gave yourself permission to reinvent what your love life would look yeah, like as absolutely. well. Yeah, I've reinvent <laughs> I've reinvented my personal life. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I, I think noticed that's beautiful. As we need to I, do that. Even in this dating situation, like I I will say, you know, I still had the door open for other guys yeah. to, you know. But I will say um as I grew in this dating relationship and and started having to what I learned in this dating relationship is how to communicate my needs. I don't think I even knew what my needs were mm. before this, this, but I noticed the little disagreements or little, the times I would get mad with him is because I didn't communicate to him. So it wasn't really his it was fault. Expectations. Right. It mm -hmm. wasn't his fault. I didn't communicate a need to him. And so I've learned how to communicate my needs in this relationship or situationship or dating. We're not going to call it a situation. <laughs> no, we're not going to call it it's a gonna situation. It's going to transition into yeah, something dating. deeper or he's yeah. preparation for your next partner. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I learned how to communicate my needs. I learned uh, conflict resolution. Like the way he handles conflict is impeccable. Um, you know, he knows how to sandwich. <laughs> that is so freaking important. Yeah, he's going to give you the good stuff. Yes. You know, the, uh, affirmation, <laughs> then the constructive criticism. This is what I want you to work on. Yeah. And then the affirmation again. Yeah. So that's absolutely. good. Beautiful. Um, and so through the way he handled me, I learned how to handle him. And so I love this mirroring behavior. Like, yeah, right? mirror I mirror his this behavior. Is great because he's also stretching you and growing you in the process. Yeah. And this is part of what you were speaking to earlier about you can't get this development without relationship. Without, yeah. <laughs> I mean, just I admire the way he handles conflict and the way he communicates himself and his needs, et cetera. Um, now, one thing I have been thinking about, I hope he doesn't watch this. Um, I hope he. Does I, I want to <laughs> know the difference between compatibility and chemistry. Okay, huge difference. Yeah. Okay, so chemistry is you having the spark, mm -hmm. and there's um uh, some kinetic energy going on, right? We we feel like there is a vibe between us. It's more emotional. Mm -hmm. Okay, chemistry mm -hmm. is an uh, emotion, a passion that you have for this person. They excite you. It feels like natural conversation and easy and flow. Mm -hmm. But compatibility has multiple elements to it, okay? Because it's more lifestyle based. One, it's timing. Mm -hmm. Are we at the same place in our lives where we want the same things? Mm -hmm. Shared activities. Do we have common interests and in mm -hmm. things that we both love? A mutual purpose that we both want to pour into one another. This is why the purpose mate part is so important if you are at a place when you want your purpose mate. And then the third part is communication. Is there a sender and receiver? And do we understand our roles in both? Because we can't be both at the same time. How right, do we like yeah. each other's communications? How do we like the way that we deliver messaging to each other? Our preferred form or tool of communication. Um, do we Are we able to conflict, resolution, um, concept, conflict resolve? So you have to have timing, communication, and shared activities. Like those things are extremely important. And by timing, I mean like, what are your intentions with him? Does he have the same intentions with you? Are you guys at the same place in your life where you want the same things? So compatibility requires like, yes, I'm in a place where I want my life to merge with mm -hmm. him versus chemistry is, oh, I fool with you. I like the way you give me butterflies. Okay. Huge difference. Okay. You want both because we do want yeah. the, the passion in the relationship, but what creates the sustainability is the security. Yeah. And that's what the compatibility creates. Okay. Do we have passion and security? Do we have <laughs> do we have chemistry I, and compatibility? No, I I do feel like we sometimes I wonder if we have chemistry. Ah, so we have the compatibility, maybe not the chemistry part. Yeah, and like I do like I my heart flutters at the thought of him, but it happened over time. Mm -hmm. Like I don't think it was ever a moment where I felt like a fireworks had went off okay. during a date and. Um, and we both were magnetically like feeling uh -huh. away. Um, and so that's the most interesting part of this where I care about somebody deeply. Um, I feel comfortable around him. We share a lot of mm -hmm. 
Um, but I don't know if the, the, I think that you're um, bringing up something that a lot of women struggle with. And this is like a great point that you brought up because we think that it's supposed to be fireworks. Who told you that? And who sold you that? That it's supposed to be fireworks 24 seven, or even like I saw him from across the room and I just knew that he was the one who sold you that dream. Where'd you get that from? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Let me, let me tell you this. Okay, so you don't necessarily who sold you that dream, but I, I will say this, that I believe that with the right tools that chemistry, or at least the passion, can be created. Okay. Because what we can do is, and and what we're looking for is um, emotions, right? We're looking for emotional triggers that create uh, this, you know, invigoration or this excitement. But you can get those from the things that you do from the things that you say, mm -hmm. from how you you know show up for this person. So you can get them through actions or things that we share or create together. Uh, moments of spontaneity. You can be the spice in the relationship. What mm -hmm. you'll have a harder time doing is creating the compatibility. Right. And okay. that's why I think when you have compatibility, you have like the meat. Yeah. Okay. Chemistry is like an extra, you know, bonus, but the, the passion, the chemistry can be created if you're a passionate person. Yeah. But if you're boring... And, you know, you want him to be exciting. Well, okay, we need to spruce up yeah. the passion then more. Mm -hmm. And that can be from the things that you do, you know, to the, the um, activities that you have planned for one another, to what you wear, to, you know, how you devour each other. It can be different levels mm -hmm. that you even can create of intimacy where that spark is flowing. But yeah. the sustainability will come from the compatibility. And usually that spark that you're looking for is usually emotional triggers, not necessarily from positive romantic passion it's usually from something toxic in the past mm. that you've experienced of the cat and mouse game that mm -hmm. you often played mm -hmm. where there was a fear of losing someone and so that evoked this you know this this oh my god my i have this brick in my stomach and you know i'm so into this person but it's not really that you're into that person you don't like the feeling of rejection and that's what it's evoking in you and we sometimes misunderstand that for chemistry and passion yeah oh yeah absolutely so sometimes yeah. we're ad addicted to the toxicity because when it's right. too calm and peaceful, we're like, "Oh my God, this is so safe. What am I going to do with this?" Right. But yeah. we were dying for we were dying for <laughs> yeah. the safety, though. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> we wanted that absolutely. so bad. <laughs> we wanted the peace. We wanted the peace. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that it's really important that you you know that you appreciate the peace. And then if you do want to spice things up and add, you know, more chemistry, go more deeper, intimate in maybe your guys' conversations or, you know, plan things that you guys can both, you know, look forward to. Mm -hmm. But girl, if you got the compatibility, mm -hmm. like, that's crucial. I said to myself, I'm like, if this don't work out with him, who are you going to date? Because he got, because <laughs> he, he got, like, I'll look back and I journal my, what I want often mm -hmm. you know every few months and it never changed i might add a few things yeah but i'm like girl he on down the list <laughs> who are you gonna date <laughs> if he listens to this episode or he watches this episode my advice to him is to ghost you for a few days no he's already did that and that will get you he, that no. will bring you right no. back to passion real quick <laughs> no. don't <laughs> cut this out of the interview he already did that he did we, that. We, you got so tell me, the psycho no. <laughs> tell me the psychology around that, please. It really comes from a place. Of, oh, my gosh. You, you really have to sit in appreciation <laughs> for what he brings. And you have to fall in love with healthiness. And you're not in love with healthiness yet. Once you fall in love with healthiness, once you fall in love with eating your vegetables, right? Candy is delicious. Mm -hmm. It like satisfies this instant gratification. But learning to love what's good for you is a process. That requires work. Yeah. And he sounds like he is really good for you, but you kind of still, you're like, but where's the wait, candy? Wait, and hold like, on. These are so the vegetables. I need, I need you to explain why he needed to ghost me for two days. Okay. So because you didn't appreciate the piece, yeah. oftentimes there's emotional triggers, right? Yeah. When you create a roller coaster ride of emotion, <laughs> he was able to create a fear of abandonment because you thrive off of um, past behaviors yeah. of potentially yeah. losing someone you got comfortable or and, and he was like okay let me wake her up let me shake her so that she can see my value or my worth because if she doesn't hear from me now I'm going to draw her in right because there's no greater killer than silence mm -hmm. silence is the greatest form mm -hmm. of communication if you want to get under someone's skin just be quiet 
just let their imagination run wild and you will start to, you will start to fuck some shit up when you get silence <laughs> okay <laughs> that is toxic okay but this is human behavior i get it though. i this get it just this okay is so he's go- <laughs> he's in the ghost can we can he not do that again okay he so shook we, me we up but you needed to be shook he did so yeah he did the ghost but when he goes i i know when he comes back around he's going to have a voice note or something Mm -hmm. or a longer text and he's going to express himself very well. Yeah. It's almost like he took them two days to like gather up what he needs to say. Yeah. In the most mature way possible. Um, (laughs) here's, here's where I don't like, um, the ghosting being used as a training tool. Okay. Cause it's, it's not actually, I don't, I don't feel, I don't feel as though that's going to be, it probably won't be a normal habit, but for like people listening, I want them to know like I don't ever one hundred percent. Yeah, I've we never we gotta make that clear. I never condone ghosting. Yeah. I'm actually like you know playing with a friend right now when you guys hear me you know making fun of the ghosting thing. Um, what I need you guys to understand though is sometimes uh, silence will be weaponized and it is toxic because yeah. what happens is maybe your partner gave you constructive feedback or said something that you didn't like, or maybe you didn't take accountability for something that silence can sometimes be a punishment for the behavior that you did that they didn't like. And so if you're someone who, you know, grows anxious from that, or you start having, you know, conversations Mm -hmm. with yourself or overanalyzing, what it does is teach you then to not speak up because you don't want to lose them again or you don't want to be yeah. punished with silence. And that can be very damaging yeah. to a relationship. I'm not saying he did that to you. No, he did But for people Thank God. who listen Thank, to my yeah. relationship <laughs> advice, you know, I always have to like do this little add in of like, hey, you guys, I was playing. <laughs> yeah. I don't really condone that okay. behavior. She going to cut this will, part out, y'all. I'm leaving this <laughs> in. But it can be weaponized, and I I don't ever yeah. condone that. I do yeah. not condone that. So for, for us, it was one of those things where – I think uh, it was a moment of conflict, a moment of conflict. And I expressed my disappointment in something. And I think he needed time to withdraw Mm -hmm. and kind of figure out what it meant for him. And so I think that moment was great for the both of us because I, you know, space can also be healthy. It was great for the both of us because it made him have to come out and tell me what needs weren't being met yeah that he had you know and that's not an easy conversation and then for me it has taught me to speak up when my needs aren't being met yeah. so like just the other day I text him you know in the best way possible because I'm I'm learning from him how mm-hmm. to address how something to communicate. something that he you know kind of slacked off from doing that I really appreciated which is what made me fall for him his consistency and communication mm-hmm. And so he, uh, you know, he responded and said, you're right. My communication has been off and this is why. Mm. And then he said, but no excuses. I, um, I, 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 I will do better. Mm-hmm. You know, like <laughs> um, he took accountability. He said he would change. And he did. He, yeah. he got back on it. Um, and I just appreciate that. He's cultivated a safe space for me to express my needs versus me f- coming off feeling needy or mm. like gaslighting me. Yeah. Like, oh, what do you mean? Uh, you know, I'm not doing this or that. Yeah. Like he's cultivated a safe space for me to, to be able to tell him when I feel like something's off or and that's probably what got me like <laughs> That's what reeled me in. Being able to express yourself is huge. Yeah. For sure. And if you're not, if you in the past, you didn't have permission to do that or you I weren't walked comfortable on eggshells. with that. I walked yeah. on eggshells or people I just felt didn't have the emotional availability or capacity to. So sometimes when don't listen to the TikTok girls telling you to always be fr- flirty and fun. Mm-hmm. And if he does something you don't like, just just do this or that, because I feel like they're training us to not hold men accountable, mm-hmm. right? Or not to speak up for ourselves. And you don't have to do it in a way that sounds like you're complaining. Correct. Like I did it in the softest way possible. Like, and told him if he needed space, I'm willing to give him so that. the delivery is important. The I think delivery is absolutely huge. important because 
And I, I, I try not to ever do the, we need to talk. Very good. Because you sound, they, that are, they're going to be on the fence. scares them. <laughs> it, it's the, we need to talk mm-hmm. is going to scare a man. It sounds like we're in trouble <laughs> out from the jump. When yeah. You hear somebody say absolutely. we need to talk, what I do. <laughs> yeah. I want to know. And like, oh, we could talk about this later. No. Now you got me thinking all day of what. Right. <laughs> what, so, yeah, I think in this dating situation, I learned how to even express my needs, but in a way that's not complaining or bossy yeah. or, you know, in a, a respectful way. Um, and so, yeah. In response to Nicole's um, way that she handled, like, even conversation in what you're saying when you're talking about, like, okay, we're not going to do the we need to talk. Um, a spicy tip for that is actually sending a calendar invite. And letting the person know, hey, if you're free later, you know, at 7 p.m. or 8 p.m., I'd love to have like a quick, you know, chat with you about X, Y, Z. Are you open to that? Right. They're making themselves available to that. For men in particular. um, Man, I'm about to be like, we doing dinner tonight. (laughs) (laughs) You go, you go see. I got some things to talk about after we there. Like, (laughs) It's really healthy to schedule an appointment when you're mm-hmm. going to hit something, somebody who you need um, emotion or mm-hmm. compassion mm-hmm. or like mm-hmm. empathy pull from. If you're about to have a conversation where you're going to need emotional support through it, scheduling the appointment for that absolutely. is I, so healthy. Absolutely. Because oftentimes we want to talk about what we want to talk about when we want to talk about it. And the person isn't in the right environment or state of mind mm-hmm. to receive the information. Mm-hmm. So that timing is extremely important. So if we can send a calendar invite. Yeah. <laughs> Or schedule. I'm just yeah, really but I I, I, I say I would trick. I'd be like, hey, let's do dinner. Let's do dinner. And yeah, then, like, then so, bring it up. Yeah, now that I have your attention, yeah, <laughs> I will say like we schedule our Facetimes, and I feel like we're able to in our Facetime call. Like when we call each other, we might just be lightly shooting the but hit, yeah. yeah, but when we schedule our Facetime calls, we are actually learning like it's intentional. Yeah, it's almost like sometimes For I'll sure. sit. I'll sit down and write out a few things that I might want to know that I don't know about mm-hmm. him yet Beautiful. that I can cover in that FaceTime because now I'm seeing your mannerisms. Like you got to keep it. I love that you're writing notes on like, Ooh, I want to ask this and this, like that's, that's important. Yeah. I feel like when you're in something long distance or getting to know someone long distance, I mean, this is probably the case with any relationship. I feel like I'm working on a connection every single day. For sure. Every day. For sure. For sure. It, there's work involved. I'm like, in it. is there a time when I won't be feeling like I'm working on a connection? But it, does, it doesn't have to be painful work, though. It sounds like yeah. you can still enjoy it when you look at it playful and fun. Yeah. I think for me, because we're still in a dating stage. Yeah. And so I don't have security around that. Like, I think when you're like, okay, you go from dating each other to, hey, we're doing this. Like, we're in a committed. Mm-hmm. Probably that anxiousness will go down even more. Hopefully. A lot of women would relate to that challenge. Do you know how to make the transition? So if you decided right now I want to commit a relationship, would you know how to get him there? No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> so on that note, you guys, go to the spicylife.com. <laughs> Your purpose made awaits. Um course, please sign up for my course April 12th. <laughs> so that you can get that transition. I will help you ladies, okay? <laughs> Classroom environment. We meet every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Hilarious. You're gonna get that coaching on how to shift him into commitment. I got you. Okay, and back to yeah. the show. No. <laughs> interesting about us the first three months I was emotionally unavailable like he was pouring into me every day yeah. doing the the call I think we talked for three months and I called him once and that was on his birthday wow three months you know into it um I could- that's a lot of him pouring into you and that sounds very Man. one-sided a lot of Man. men may not absolutely be- <laughs> it was very <laughs> that, one-sided that, and so that I can't flexible. be mad if I start calling him a little because I'm trying to give more and so he pulls back from calling me because now he's trying to make space for that balance. Yeah, of, and there should be balance. Yeah, there, for, there yeah. for sure should be so balance. So me being like, well, why doesn't he? Why is he as consistent? Well, because he, he he's trying to get the balance from Correct. me now, and I get it, and I do know I need to like nurture the relationship. Absolutely, like it's not all, to, especially since now I've shifted from not feeling like it was going to be anything to, okay, I really like you. Yeah. I really like you. Yeah. And if if you guys are both 
creating safety for one another, right? Both pouring into the nurturing, you both get the added benefit of, you know, making each other feel secure mm-hmm. and knowing mm-hmm. like, okay, this is safe. But yeah. I think it should always be you take a I step. I think he I need to step. do more work with pouring into him. Because in all fairness, he deserves that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he, I, put in, he put in a lot of time. He put in a lot of time. I he earned that. I think, <laughs> I think I need to step up and put a little bit more work in. Yeah. And have you asked him, like, where can I show up for you more? I know what it is. Affection. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and we're not giving him that? <laughs> we're we're long distance, but yes, I could have I could have definitely given him more affection when I visited him, you know, in his I think for me, I didn't know where we were. I was too I, I didn't know like what the vibe was going to be because because mm-hmm. I thought about it before I got there. We didn't have that much flirty energy yeah. amongst each other. So we didn't really set the stage. So I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. Like I didn't know where we supposed to be kissing on this trip. Are we supposed to be like, what are we supposed yeah. to be doing? Now I know I'm like he articulated what his needs were very clearly to me. I know how I'm supposed to be showing up this time very good i i know though that it can be a little tricky when you don't know what the status is or you don't know like yeah Yeah. i didn't really yeah so have you had a conversation with him about where are you leading us (laughs) no i haven't okay to be continued that's (laughs) another episode so (laughs) no i haven't i haven't and and for again I'm, i'm saying this because we're 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 four months in, but there's three months of me being emotionally unavailable. Yeah, so he also doesn't know maybe like the highs that you come with or what the benefits package Absolutely. of your love entails because you were withholding. Absolutely. Yeah. Now I'm going into my fourth month and I'm actually showing up like it's month one. And so, yeah. I'm, That's what I'm makes happy it he's tricky. sticking through this because a listen. lot of men, especially if he's listen. a superior man, will say, no, I don't really need to help you through this discovery process, right? Like I don't, I shouldn't have to perform this level of excellence in order yeah. to have it reciprocated. If he yeah, knows his worth absolutely. and value. Yeah. So that patient speaks highly to, that you know, patient. his investment in you, but now he's asking for a return. Like <laughs> where's the ROI? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there was a moment, cause I know he asked me, well, what was the moment that's changed for you? And One was specific. I was going through depression around December and we were on a FaceTime and I ended up um, crying. And before then, I came across very Mm -hmm. like polished businesswoman, you know, (laughs) put together. But on this FaceTime call, he's seeing me in a very vulnerable Mm -hmm. state. And I was very honest about my depression. And I just found like just signed up for uh, I won't say the platform since Mm -hmm. it's not sponsored. (laughs) They don't get a shout no, out. No, right. they got to run, run, I, run for a, a, a therapist. <laughs> and, you know, and I, why I'm crying, I did notice like I, his body language mm-hmm. and it never looked, he never looked uncomfortable mm-hmm. with my emotions. Um, and he just, the way he responded to me, the way he held space for me um, and just his words, mm-hmm. I was just like, Oh, you're stuck with me. <laughs> like, like a safe so space for me to be soft you. and yeah. vulnerable. It was that was the second one. The first one, he was uh, teaching me how to put together a drill over FaceTime. We got to do <laughs> stuff over FaceTime because I wanted to pull up a coat uh, rack in my office. And it's only two screws that go in. Mm-hmm. And he was like, you know, you should wait until I get there. I'll put it up for you. And I kept saying, oh, it's only two screws. Mess. <laughs> And he's like, no, you don't understand. You, you need listened. to, you, you need to listened. have anchors for those screws. I'm like, well, where do I get the anchor? What's the anchor? <laughs> right. And I'm like, like pushing back. And then finally, he said, you can, you can, uh, you can hang it up, but under my supervision. Mm. And I like the way he reframed it, and he honored my independence. Yeah. But I'm still gonna support you and be the man and make sure you do it right. Mm. So that was the first thing that yep. shifted things for me like I got off the phone like and on that same call he asked me how did I like to be loved mm. so on that call I was just like "Ooh, you in danger girl <laughs> no but that's a great question Esther Perot will always um pose that question like 
share with me how you were loved as a child. Yeah. And that is how you probably love as an adult. So I love that he even knew to ask you yeah, that. Like absolutely. that's just so yeah. such a high level of consciousness and depth to him. Yeah. Um, I can talk to you girl about him all day long. You're going to share with us cause we got to wrap where to get all the products, all the juice, anything that you're coming out with that you want to promote. Let everybody know how to find you. Ladies, if you have the worst of periods, I'm talking about bloating, mood swings, heavy bleeding, cramping, you have to get my happy flow. It's an all natural product. Um, and I promise you the best period of your life within mm. 30 to 60 days, either your first the cycle or your second cycle your or your money back. Wow. That's how confident I am in my product and its effectiveness. You sold you sold me when I heard you say that I won't be bloated like that like I'm gonna be able to fit my pants and the scale isn't gonna blow up yeah. when I'm on my period I I will try it just alone because of that yeah that <laughs> that alone you sold me <laughs> yeah that's good to know because we're swapping out our uh the you know the benefits on the front and yeah I'm like I I put reduced bloating on the newest Huge. labels Huge. oh my gosh I um, love that but yeah so definitely come try my happy flow use code let's. The, the what spicy life spicy yes yeah spicy use life. code spicy <laughs> for 20 percent off we're gonna give you a good discount Ooh, yes. um and yeah and you can find us at myhappyflow.co love it okay and you guys can always play with my twitter stroke my ig at spicy Mari. go to the spicy life.com share this episode with a friend click the click and subscribe you guys pass the love on and there you guys have it you have just been spiced the spicy life